like many other companies that have been around for a long time that started with primitive technology, um, I'm guessing this is very similar to what a lot of people see. We had a group of people that were responsible for managing the file systems, database systems. We had some software systems out there, in-house applications were starting to be developed years ago. And because there were certain people that were good at those technologies, they owned that space and were responsible for making sure that everything was being done. Um, they were building them, they were troubleshooting them, they were, they were communicating with other groups where necessary, and sort of just building it up from, from ground up. Because each one of these teams had worked on their own solutions, they were responsible for looking at all the little additions that were put on there. If some new technology came in within their space, they would add it on. Uh, other database systems would get added on. You would see software systems, in-house applications get added. And then as time goes on, more and more of these applications get built, more databases get added. It happens for everybody. File systems need to be added to support the software and the databases. And then at the end of the day, on top of that, you also have uh, dependencies between those applications, right? So a database guy is going to need a file system in order to make his database go. But then the in-house application guy is going to go to the database guys and say, hey, can you throw together a database for me real quick so I can get my application up and running? Operations manager comes in and just out of the box, it has some, some really good benefits. And so again, as technical guys, we're looking at the benefits that it provides for us and thinking, wow, this is great. We've really taken a huge step forward in what we're going to deliver. For one, there's automatic system type discovery. So whenever a new system comes online, it automatically can figure out if it's a SQL Server database, if it's a particular file system sort of thing, if it's an application that's running on it. And it puts those uh, servers in the right category. It also starts doing automatic monitoring. The, the real nice advantage here was that once it automatically detects that, say, like SQL Server is running on a Windows system, and it brings that in and has the agent running on it automatically, it automatically applies a whole set of rules and alerts that's practiced in a lot of cases written by the guys that wrote SQL Server or you know, directly prescribed by those teams to be the rules and alerts that monitor that particular space. So you tend to get a lot of good, in many cases, if you have it, probably a lot too much information in a lot of cases and you have to scale it way back, but you do get a lot of good detailed information. So again, as technical guys, we saw all of this data start streaming in and thought, man, we, we really got it. The other really neat benefit that started to happen here was that within uh, sort of the, the front end console for operations manager, there is sort of that one screen view where you can see all of your alert, alerts and rule information all pooling together in one place. And so Kind of the neat thing we started to see was that there were certain representatives from different teams that would start to gravitate towards operations manager and start to look at all of the different alerts for their group and start to see what was going on in some other groups. So it was kind of neat to see everything in one place. So we thought we've got this granular view. We're automatically monitoring all of our systems. We've got some technical people all showing up in the right place. You know, we win. Congratulations all around. You know, top champagne corks and order the disco ball of the day. The problem with it, though, was it didn't pan out long term. Once we got all of this in place and we thought that we were going in the right direction and we're looking at all these little siloed individual systems that we have with an operations manager, the problem we still had at the end of the day was when something broke out there somewhere, it could be email, it could be an in-house application, it could be one of our portal applications to the outside world, whatever it was, we still had a hard time tying whatever the customer saw back to one of these little siloed applications and this giant list of alerts that we were seeing in Operations Manager making a connection between those two things. So where it was great for each entity, it didn't show these dependencies between even file systems or databases, let alone between a database and an application. So we're sort of having the same problem we even had back in 2005, 2006. And when we had um, a database monitor go south, or I'm sorry, a database go south and an alert would pop for it, we didn't necessarily know that that software was connected to that particular database because there wasn't that dependency information between those two systems inherently built into operations manager. So here you can start to see a little bit of a screenshot, um, just a corner of it. One of our dashboards that we have, we started with for a customer portal back in 2008, 2009, 2010 timeframe. Um, I've obviously scraped this. We don't name all of our servers, server 1, server 2, server 3, server 4. 
Um, the idea is there though, and the, the structure that you see here is exactly the way the dashboard looks at State Auto, but we've obviously cleaned it up for presentation. So we know that all of these technical entities that we knew before, so all of these servers and services that you see here in the database and SQL service, that all comes from Operations Manager and the other normalized alerts that we have in Operations Manager. This is simply, we can talk about this more if anybody wants to know more detail about it. This is just a SharePoint um, foundation server. Not, it's not even like a SharePoint uh, enterprise version or anything like that. It's just with the foundation with the um, Operations Manager Visio plugin installed on the foundation server. So it has the ability to query back into the Operations Manager databases and populate green check marks and red X's or yellow triangles or maintenance mode icons right here on this Visio. So this allows us to sort of have a clean slate. We can call it whatever we want and then we can wire up those alerts right onto this dashboard. Our idea was to put all these technical entities on this dashboard because that's what we know about. Again, as technical guys, we're thinking, we're thinking technical. We know this stuff is important because the database has to be there. We know the servers have to be there. Let's put all of those things on a dashboard and we'll put customer portal at the top because we know that these parts are all involved somehow in that and we'll share that with everyone. Maybe that's that one. But the problem there was that in operations manager, all these little technical details and server components that we're tracking are still not a good representation of what is important to our customers or not. So, you know, our genius idea was, was to take this server service, for example, and server two goes down or any one of these other things breaks. If this goes south and we see a critical alert pop in operations manager um, saying that any number of things is wrong, there's hundreds of things being checked. We should probably say that the customer portal is down because one of the servers that we know is important isn't working. So the problem with that very quickly realized is that there's a whole bunch of things that can happen from the operations manager perspective that don't necessarily mean that you have a problem from the customer perspective. So a couple examples here, probably a duh for most people, but I guess a lot of times people will look at these metrics and go, oh my gosh, that's terrible, CPU is bad, it's 100%, that, that must be terrible, right? Well, in a lot of cases, the CPU can be at 100%, and maybe whatever service those people need from that system is still responding and delivering back XML or SQL queries or whatever it is. That is not a good example for us of something that is a, a real problem. If the memory goes to 90% on the system, we also do pop a critical alert for that because we don't want that to happen. There's a lot of times when memory can be 90%, still the customer's okay. Uh, DNS response time from our Active Directory servers pops all the time. That's like our frequent flyer for us. It's always going off and telling us something is going south. Still not a good example in disk space. Being under 20%, well, something we want to know about technically and we want to fix it is not a good indicator that the customers are having some sort of problem. So, you know, test one in the customer portal dashboard, not the ultimate success that we didn't really want and we're still not hanging our disco ball and we're still not popping champagne. Essentially what was happening was we had a SQL server that we didn't know was causing a problem, causing incredible slowness in one of our key front-end portal applications. And it was one of those big things where when it goes down, we start looking at the hundreds of thousands of dollars that we're losing as a company on the big new ticker going by and go, man, we've got to fix this. And we had, I think if I remember right, like 21 to 23 subject matter experts from all over our company, all over IT and business, all packed into one training room looking at all of their own individual tools at the time, trying to figure out why our front end portal was slow because I mean, we had a help desk guy right there kind of on the red phone every morning at nine o'clock during this event. Every day this happened, would call in and say, our portal is down, we can't, we, nobody can get in, we're having overwhelmed with customer calls, it's the end of the world. And so we would all sit there every day for two to three weeks trying to figure out what was going on because we really didn't have a good look at our ecosystem in general. So uh, what Bootstrap did for us at the time, we actually brought it in, I installed it at 10 o'clock at night. Um, there's a whole great, cool hero story behind that. Actually, it took me like an hour to install it. It looked great the next morning when I showed this entire map of our application. You'll see it here in, in a minute, briefly. Um, but very quickly, it built an ecosystem for us that helped us solve that problem, and it was a good story for us. As Bootstrap has developed their uh, software as well too, though, as we're using it as a troubleshooting tool, we start to find that there's a couple of key components of what Bootstrap can do for us that really start to marry up well with what Operations Manager is doing as well. So the first one is accurate application maps. Um, 
We talked about all those manual dependencies that we had before, constantly plugging state auto for years about not knowing, that early on, not having any idea what's connected to what, as people were getting hit by all these fruit trunks and leaving the company, and we were you know, in this foray of not knowing where, what connections were happening to what system. But also, as developers develop new things at this point, we still didn't get the memo sometimes that there was now a dependency on a database that wasn't there before, there was a web service we didn't know about. So going around and talking to all those people for that dashboard that I showed before, it was a full-time job running around to everybody trying to talk to those people. So here's the brief uh, look really quickly at our uh, blue stripe, uh, nipple going to that more. The, the realization here was that we can pull this discovery information that Bluestripe is giving us to help troubleshoot problems and build an ecosystem map. That can be imported directly into Operations Manager. It's a big deal because now all of that work that it's doing to build all that, just as sort of a on the side bonus of doing this really good ecosystem troubleshooting, is that now we can bring that right into Operations Manager and show all of these individual servers that are running all of these monitors and all these different components of Operations Manager in a view that shows the dependencies between those systems for purposes of an application ecosystem. The idea here is that all of these applications, we know about many of these different systems because we go around and talk to all the individual teams that, that do. We talk to architects, development groups, we talk to subject matter experts who know these things to build this manually. But no matter how well we do at all of that, there's still gonna be some systems that we miss that are part of this application group that make up an application system. <clears throat> this helps us find those application components that we're missing. And then, I guess kind of the neat transition here is rather than go into a room when we want to talk about a new application we want to get monitored within our, our um, operations manager dashboard environment, is rather than just write our application name at the top and just say, hey, we've got a whiteboard, what do you guys know? Subject matter experts, architects, a lot of those guys are very good technically, but they don't like to sit in a room for hours and spew this information. What they can do instead is when we get most of this map filled in, they are a lot more likely to have a few minutes for us and give us better information about little details that we're missing and fill us in the gaps then and help us with these things we missed when we know about them, rather than just come in and try to get a whole brain dump from them. So not only is it more accurate, but we get better responses from the people that we work with within the company as well too. And we end up with great maps on the front end that we can use. We have our customer portal still here at the top. We have some servers like we did before. But now, because of this underlying Bluestripe connection into Operations Manager, we're able to automatically add and change these dependencies within Operations Manager and have a much better view of our application. So, uh, as far as a uh, sort of a, a big change for us, that, that was a, a really good one. So then the, the second part of this is real customer transactions. So before I was, so one, we, we want to have good, accurate maps of what's happening. But two, we have that realization from before where all this technical stuff that we had, all the CPU metrics and, and memory metrics, while useful to technical people, don't really make for a good view in a dashboard to try to roll up to the top and tell our senior management or our customers about it. So real customer transactions. The other thing that Fact Finder is doing for us, and again, this I guess is partly comes directly from its ability to, to do the troubleshooting, is this looking at the interactions between all of these systems. And it's, it's recording the response times between the systems in order to tell us more about the systems and where our slow points might be um, within the whole ecosystem. But what it's also doing at the same time is it is able to integrate with SCOM again and take some of those transaction times with the alerts that we set up when transactions are slow or not working well and pump those directly into Operations Manager as well too to show up on those application maps and turn things red and, and yellow for us there as well. So what we end up with is a view of the actual transactions occurring in real time for all of the customers using the application ecosystem. Another big one. Those events get sent directly to Operations Manager. And now because they're an object in Operations Manager, normalized along with all of those technical alerts, we can start to, to filter those right into the view that we have on this front end dashboard that we're sharing with really start to get neat at this point because we have all of these 
transactional sort of alerts that we're pulling from Bluestripe. And we have, a, Bluestripe by the way also has very good, a lot of times um, alerts that'll come in, will pop an alert every time you get one instance of a particular problem. Bluestripe has the ability to say, I want to see three alerts within a five minute period, so we don't panic when we see the first one in case it's a network flip or whatever. So we, you have really good thresholding capability within Bluestripe to get these alerts over in Operations Manager. But then what we have the ability to do is, we can take like a, the customer login, we know where, where the IIS server is or where that web server is that is running the, the initial login process that people use. Or you know, website perspective overall, if we want to look at that application server. We can start to map all of these sort of transactional information that's really describing what the customers are seeing right into the, sort of the top end of this dashboard and get a view from the customer perspective built right in along with everything else that we're displaying in this dashboard. The, the way it works today, ideally, is so if this process server goes south and stops working or has some sort of CPU problem or any of those memory problems that we saw, or if the disk space is at 20% or less, any of those things we still want to know about, those things still show up on our dashboard and let us know that, hey, some technical person needs to look at this. But the key here is that it doesn't turn the customer portal right. <coughs> so a senior leader type person can come and look at this and go, okay, at the top end we're still okay, all the transactions are still okay, but we do have something down here that I hope some technical person is looking at so they can be informed even down to that server level from one place. If the user interface stops working, either a um, customer transaction directly from Bluestripe is showing some sort of performance problem or one of our synthetic transactions that's mimicking the customer experience from operations manager goes south and we know that that customer experience Part is going wrong, then it will turn the customer portal right. <clears throat> Still an ongoing process to tune this and make it work right. But what you start to see here very quickly is if you have the customer portal and the website perspective going bad, but you also have one of these turn right at the same time, uh, now we know that one of these metrics up here is being impacted down here. And so <clears throat> Fact Finder is able to quantify the impact of this for us, which is huge. We can say that 400 connections have failed in the last 20 minutes, meaning that we've had 400 user attempts getting into this application that have not worked. Operations manager can isolate what the cause of that was. We had a service go offline, or a web services server stopped responding, or you know, fill in the blank, database stopped responding. Customer impact married up with an actionable technical item provide huge wins for us when we catch these. Because you have a, a single story you can tell about what's happening. So, um, you know, again, at the end of the day, you get down to the point where you have these technical people, supervisors and managers, and I guess where this really started to take off and what State Auto's been doing in the last year is our CTO has started to look at these and now has this as a favorite in her computer. And so that really tells me we're going on the right path and I, I shouldn't suck moving forward in setting this sort of thing up. So now um, we're going through these, uh, these dashboards and adding more of them. It's one of the high priority things for our, our group is to continue to 